This is the ANET A2. The ANET A2 is a standard Cartesian style 3D printer with a 210 by 210 by 210 millimeter build volume, a Bowden style extruder setup, and a 3 millimeter aluminum heated bed. This is the aluminum frame offering from ANET. ANET is a very popular low cost 3D printer manufacturer based in China, with most of their kits going for under $200 US. You can usually find these kits with free shipping if you look around, but to the US, you will have the longer overseas ship time. The printer is easy to assemble. It took about five hours to get it set up and ready to print. ANET has you follow a video for instruction that worked out pretty well, but I would like to see a paper manual just for ease of use. For the price, the printer heats up, it prints, it seems pretty sturdy, but unfortunately, that's about the end of the pros list on this machine. I have modified this one, but mostly just to fix a few annoying issues with this kit. The biggest one being the power supply mount, or lack of mount. There is no place to mount the power supply by design. This is very irritating to me and it seems unnecessary. If you intend to have this power supply just float around, at least put a cover on it to protect us from the AC voltage. So I made a cover and a mount for that. I also put a print and Z skin on the bed so I could get away from glue stick or hairspray. It is possible to print right on the aluminum, but it's not a lot of fun. Next up, the Z mount. It's in reverse, meaning it's mounted upside down when it should really be on the bottom. This causes some issues that really can't be easily fixed. Please, printer companies, stop doing this. They did give us an actual lead screw instead of a threaded rod, so that's a plus. There is some Z-wobble, but I think it's mostly introduced by the inconsistency of the plastic wheel rolling over the aluminum extrusion. Not too much you can do about that. With this Bowden setup, you're going to get some retraction issues if you don't get your slicer set up just right. It's also harder to load the filament than it needs to be, due to the cheap Bowden couplers. This could just as easily have been a direct drive setup. Any weight savings they were trying to achieve really wouldn't have made a difference in the print quality. The belts. These are the cheapest belts I've personally ever seen. They look like somebody cut them out of a raincoat. They also have you attaching them with zip ties, but hey, they work. There are some acrylic parts with this kit, but those are the least of your worries. The whole thing is put together with some T-nuts that don't like to seat unless you get them exactly right. As you build, take a look in the channel and make sure they're twisted a complete quarter turn. Now for the firmware. Oh wait, no firmware. You get what you get on the A-net. You can't alter it or re-upload it if you need to. The LCD control is also harder than it should be. For example, if you want to print from the SD card, you have to put the card in, then go unmount it, then mount it, then go find the file, select it, print it, just way too many clicks. The controller board is pretty much a dumbed down Ramps Mega combo. It has built-in motor driver chips that can't be adjusted. You don't get a part cooling fan with this thing, so the prints won't look as nice as they could, but there is a spot to add one. Another thing to mention, the heated bed plug. After about 50 hours or so of printing, I noticed this. Again, another printer melting this connector. Just solder them directly and call it a day. I printed this Benchy in PLA and with a part cooling fan, and a lot of time tuning the slicer to get it to look this good. Not too bad, but a lot of effort. How about support? Uh, no. ANET does not provide support for these machines that I know of. Again, you get what you get. So what do we have here? It prints, it's under $200, the frame's pretty sturdy, but that's about all I got. If you're looking for a cheap 3D printer, I would probably skip this one. I know that sounds harsh, but the aluminum frame really doesn't add that much to choose this printer over a lot of other printer kits that are out there. I have not been in contact with ANET or GearBest for this review. I bought this printer from the GearBest website with my own funds, and all opinions expressed are my own. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below, and as always, thanks for watching.